Hello! Right now, this exact moment, while you're watching this video, about 589 million adults worldwide are living with diabetes. And the scary part, well over a billion are already in the danger zone, pre-diabetes or high-risk glucose level. You know the story, you get labs done and the doctor says, pre-diabetes or insulin resistance or worse, type 2 diabetes. And then comes the sentence, cut the bread, forget rice, potato, don't even think about it. But wait, those are everyday foods, warm toast in the morning, a rice bowl at lunch, mashed potatoes, roasted potatoes with garlic. How are you supposed to cut that forever? Here's the truth. In most cases, you don't have to eliminate these foods. The problem isn't just bread, rice or potatoes. The problem is eating them in a way that spikes your glucose like a rocket over and over, day after day. I'm Dr. Andrew Wambier, I'm a cardiologist for over 20 years and I'm married to an endocrinologist. So trust me, I've seen it all. I've watched people overload their pancreas, their kidneys and their heart. And a big chunk of that is preventable. Today, I'm going to show you seven practical, evidence-informed strategies that can dramatically reduce glucose spikes from bread, rice, potatoes, pasta, plus a few sneaky factors most people never think about. And the best part, you won't give up your life. You just get smart. But before we start, hit the like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell, and share this with someone you love. And tell me in the comments, which one scares you the most, bread, rice, or potatoes? And where are you watching from? Drop it below! Let's go! Why do glucose spikes matter so much? Think of your pancreas like a tireless worker. Every time you eat fast digesting carbs, glucose shoots up. Your pancreas responds by pumping out insulin to bring the glucose down. If that happens three, four, five times a day, for years you can develop insulin resistance. Your cells stop listening to insulin as well. In more advanced stages, insulin production can decline and you may need medications or even injectable insulin. And there is another huge process people don't talk about enough. Glycation. Glycation is when excess glucose in the blood literally sticks to your proteins. You know when you put sugar on a hot pan and it caramelizes, turns brown, sticky, hard. That's basically what chronic high glucose is doing inside your arteries, your nerves, your kidneys, your retina. You are caramelizing from the inside, contributing to faster skin aging, stiffer arteries, higher blood pressure and higher cardiac risk, kidney damage, nerve damage, neuropathy, retina damage, retinopathy. Your goal is to turn the glucose roller coaster into a smooth. Preventing repeated spikes is one of the best long-term protections you can give your body. So, let's get to the seven strategies that help you outsmart your physiology. So, you can still enjoy rice, potatoes, pasta without paying the price. Strategy number seven, few quality matters. Not all carbs are created equal. The difference is burn speed. Picture a campfire. You've got two kinds of fuel. Type one, kindling, sawdust, ultra processed carbs, white bread, refined flour, instant mashed potatoes. You toss it into the fire and whoosh, big flame, fast, explosive. It burns out quickly. That's your glucose spike. Type two, thick logs whole grains, higher fiber, carbs, 
steel cut or thick oats, brown rice, slow burn, steady, controlled, releases energy gradually. That's more stable glucose. Rule, whenever possible, choose the logs, not the sawdust. White bread, change to whole grain bread with visible grains. White rice to brown rice or parboiled rice. Instant mashed potatoes to boiled potatoes with the skin. And if you are someone who eats healthy but still struggles with constipation, the fiber in these options can be a game changer, helping glucose control and feeding the good bacteria in your gut. Strategy number six, the biological clock trap. Here's something most people never get told. Your body has an internal clock, your circadian rhythm, and your ability to handle glucose can change dramatically depending on the time of day. Same meal, same amount, eaten at noon, moderate glucose rise. Eaten at 10 p.m., a much bigger spike. Why? At night, a few things work against you, especially sleep-related hormonal shifts, including the autonomous effect on glucose regulation. Golden rule, make your last meal specifically. If it's carb-heavy, at least three hours before bed, that huge bowl of pasta or many pizza slices at 11 p.m., you're basically asking your pancreas to do heavy lifting when your body is trying to power it down. Strategy number five, the magic acid move. Vinegar and lemon aren't just flavor, they can be metabolic tools. The acid, acetic acid in vinegar, citric acid in lemon can help blunt spikes in a few ways. Research overall suggests vinegar can reduce post-meal glucose insulin responses in many contexts. Think of it like this. Front one, slower breakdown. Acid can interfere with rapid starch breakdown and slow digestion. Front two, slower exit door. Acid can slow stomach emptying, like partially closing the exit door so carbs hit the bloodstream more gradually. How to use it? Option one, one tablespoon of vinegar diluted in a big glass of water 15 to 30 minutes before a carb-heavy meal. Option two, the easiest, dress your salad generously with vinegar, olive oil, and squeeze lemon on your food. Option three, add something fermented or acidic with the meal, pickles or kraut, etc. Quick safety note, if you have reflux, tooth enamel issue, or you have diabetes, or you take diabetes meds or insulin, use common sense, dilute it, and talk to your clinician. Strategy number four, never eat carbs naked. Never, never eat a carb alone. Think of bread, rice, or potatoes like a Formula One carb ready to go flying straight into your bloodstream. You need speed bumps. The best speed bumps are protein, meat, chicken, fish, eggs, cheese, healthy fats, olive oil, avocado, nuts, butter, three, fiber, salad, vegetables, legumes. What happens when you combine them? Fiber forms a mesh that slows absorption. Protein supports hormones that improve insulin response. Fats slow stomach emptying big time. Result, instead of an explosion, you get a slow drip of glucose. I see this all the time. Someone eats plain pasta with oil only, glucose can shoot up hard. But eat the same pasta with a meat sauce, plus a big salad first, plus olive oil on top, the spike is often dramatically smaller. Practical examples. Bread adds scrambled eggs and avocado. Rice paired with beans, lentils, meat and vegetables, potato, add olive oil, sardines or tuna, pasta, meat sauce, cheese, salad first. Dress your carbs. Don't let them leave the house naked. Strategy number three, order changes everything. This will change how you eat at restaurants and at home. The order you eat foods 
in the same meal can strongly affect the glucose spike. Studies using continuous glucose monitoring and controlled meal order interventions show that carbs last can improve short-term glycemic control. Carbs first, bread, rice first, then proteins and then veggies, bigger spike, a roller coaster curve. Carbs last, veggie first, then protein and fat, carbs at the end, significantly smoother curve. Why it works? When you eat fiber first salad, veggies, it creates a buffer. Then when carbs arrive, absorption tends to be slower and less aggressive. Restaurant playbook, bread basket hits the table, ignore it for now, order a salad or veggies first, eat that first, main dish arrives, start with protein, then veggies, only then eat the rice, potatoes and bread. Your friends might look at you funny, your pancreas will send you a thank you letter. Strategy number two, the glucose vacuum muscle. A big carb meal, the best dessert is movement. A 10 to 20 minutes easy walk, ideally starting within about 30 minutes after eating can make a real difference. Not a workout, not a run, just movement. Walk around the block, take the stairs, dance in your living room, do the dishes with some energy, play with your dog, anything that gets you a little winded and uses big muscles, especially legs. Here's the magic, it's just physiology. When muscles contract, they can increase glucose uptake in ways that don't rely purely on insulin. One reason post-meal movement can be so effective. And there's one muscle in particular, the soleus, the deep calf muscle. It's built for endurance. When you walk or do gentle calf raises, it acts like a steady glucose vacuum, helping pull sugar out of the bloodstream. Strategy number one, the fridge trick, the most surprising one. This is the most counterintuitive and one of the most powerful. The scientific term is starch retrogradation. Another way to say it, you can convert part of the starch into resistant starch. When rice, potatoes or pasta are cooked and eaten hot, the starch is generally easier to digest, meaning it can raise glucose faster. But if you cook these foods, then cook them in the fridge, often overnight, the starch structure changes, increasing resistant starch. Human studies show that cold and even cool, then reheated starches can lower glycemic response compared to freshly cooked version. For example, cold and reheated white rice lower glycemic response versus freshly cooked white rice in the control study. And freezing, then toasting bread can also lower glycemic impact compared to fresh bread in the published research. And yes, you can reheat it. Some of the resistant starch benefit can remain even after reheating. Practical plan. Cook your rice or potatoes for the week on Sunday, portion them out, refrigerate or go to the freezer, reheat what you need during the week. You are protecting your health and saving time. For bread, freeze it, toast straight from frozen. Let's recap what you just learned. It's not only what you eat, it's how you prepare it. It's when you eat it, it's in what order you eat it, it's what you pair with it. You can include bread, rice and potatoes in your life if you do it like an informed person. Your seven science-backed hacks. Number seven, choose logs, not sawdust, higher quality carbs. Number six, eat earlier, not late, circadian timing matters. Number five, use acid, vinegar, lemon, can blunt spikes. Number four, dress the carbs, protein plus fat plus fiber. Number three, order matters, first fiber, then protein, then carbs last. 
Number two, move after meals. Muscle help clear out glucose. Number one, change the starch. Cool, then the heat to more resistant starch. Now imagine you three months from now, more stable glucose, less pancreatic stress, less fear around food, enjoying what you love, protecting your heart, kidneys, nerves, and vision. It's not suffering, it is intelligence. We're talking about 589 million adults with diabetes worldwide and a massive high-risk population behind them. You don't need to be the next statistic. If this helped you, hit like and share it because this kind of knowledge can literally save lives. Which of the seven strategies are you going to implement today? Comment below. And what should you watch next? Here are two recommendations, the seven warning signs your heart isn't well, and the best foods for diabetics. My name is Dr. Andrew Wambier, and this is Dr. Dre Health Tips. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.